here, and um, I, I am glad that we had this, this hearing today, and I did think it was appropriate that Representative Rushi uh, filed the letter that he did, and, the, and that there's been an opportunity here for a public hearing, and it uh, was, wasn't actually a public hearing, but, but for, to present this in front of the public, and to be able to ask the questions and to do some investigation, and to get some of this out in the open. And so for that reason, I, I don't have any criticism whatsoever for Representative Rushi, and I am glad that we, we did have the meeting today. One thing that I, I, I hope uh, happens as a result of, of today's vote is I hope that we don't have future possible candidates who want to run for office scared away from the electoral process, because I guarantee you there will be few people who are going to look at this event and, and what's happened with me and, and to the degree that there's been the, the uh, uh, public um, attention that this has gotten that will think that, uh, well, maybe I won't run for office and maybe I'm uh, just going to decline that opportunity. And I think if we shrink the pool of people who do run for office that we are all worse off, whether we're Republican, Democrat, or an independent, I think we're worse off if we do shrink that pool of those who, who run for office. I, I did expect the, uh, the charge on the Rule 38 to dis be dismissed, and um, I do appreciate those of you who have, have looked into the, the votes I've made in the past and, and uh, scrutinized those things, and I, I actually appreciate Betsy for bringing a a couple of things up ahead of time so that they didn't come up in the hearing and, and that there would be a surprise for me. And, uh, and, I, and I don't think there's a connection there between uh, those votes that I made and some unique personal circumstances that I had. I think that there, there is a disconnect between my personal circumstances and any of the votes that happen to have come before the legislature in the, in the last year. And I do have a couple of uh, letters I want to put out. Um, I've been working on these for weeks. They're, they took me a lot of time. Uh, one is a letter from uh, a CPA in the Post Falls area that uh, he has gone through various financial records of mine and he has determined that in the last five years I have paid $120,079.71 in state and federal income tax. And uh, he was pretty, pretty uh, um, diligent about looking through those records and double checking every payment. And so. That letter will be passed out to you, and I don't know, who, does uh, Susan have that? And, uh, oh, you've already got it, okay. And then the second letter is from another CPA, and he has looked at the eight years worth of tax returns I was audited on by the IRS, and he has verified that, yes, in fact, Mr. Hart did lose all his business deductions for those eight years, and he has pointed out in, in his letter that that's very untypical. I mean, how can you have a professional in business with zero business deductions for eight years. And if you were to, or if I were to get those deductions back, um, the amount of that might be owed both at the state and federal level uh, are, is greatly diminished. And that's the battle that I'm continuing to fight. And I wish I hadn't been fighting that particular battle right now because if that issue were taken off the table, if I had been allowed my reasonable business deductions, this whole chapter of my life would have likely been wrapped up at least three, maybe even four years ago. And I'm very anxious for this chapter of my life to be wrapped up so I can move on and do other things with my time that I feel are more productive. And uh, so you've got the two letters, and uh, with that, I'll, I'll uh, answer any questions that you've got. Representative Hart, there was a, an issue that was brought up in the Ethics Committee today that we hadn't heard about before regarding a bill that was killed on a tide vote in the I voted against that bill, and that bill had to do with issuing refunds to folks who were entitled to a refund, but because of some set of, of circumstances hadn't asked for that refund yet. And I thought if they're entitled to a refund, they, there shouldn't be a statute of limitations on it. They should be able to get that irregardless of, of when they ask for it. And the scenario that I was most worried about was uh, a widower or widow who spouse might have passed away, maybe had some dealings that they weren't aware of, and over the years, those might have come to light. They discovered they were entitled to a refund and would have been barred from that refund had that bill gone through. There, Representative, there was a lot of discussion in the Ethics Committee today about perceptions, and the members of the committee each shared, those who had declared Rule 38 in the past, shared
hear the reasons and the circumstances under which they had invoked the rule. And a lot of it was about perception, that they were in a position where there might be perception that they had a conflict, and Gwyneth had a direct one. Did it change your mind at all, listening to what they had to say today, about when you might declare a conflict? Well, I think that is a troubling road to go down, to have a disciplinary action based on perceptions. Now, I think that this hearing we had today just draws some awareness on the issue. But I think as citizen legislators, we all do something else for a living. We're not professional politicians. We don't have legal staff. And I think we need to have some flexibility and some deference to the members to not draw those lines too tightly. Otherwise, as like I said, or like was pointed out in the committee meeting, we're going to spend half our time on the floor declaring Rule 38 conflicts, and we won't get anything done. You said at the beginning of the attention that became focused on all of this that you felt that your experiences have made you a better legislator. Do you still think that? Well, I think I have some unique life experiences that relate to the tax issue. And the primary thing that I am struggling right now is the denial of my business deductions for eight years. And I think that, I mean, the letter speaks for itself from the CPA, Mr. Wayne Paul. And you can read that letter and if you want to quote him. But I think that taxpayers want to be treated fairly. And I want to be treated like the average taxpayer. And I understand I wrote a book on the issue, and I popped my head up above the crowd, if you will, and I've been shot at. And I don't regret that. But I do think that I should be treated like any other taxpayer insofar as those deductions are concerned. Now, whether or not I get audited again, you know, that's sort of probably comes with the territory for who I am and what I've done. But I do think, as every other taxpayer is entitled to deductions, I should be too. How about someone other than Betsy? I don't want her to think she's my favorite. She's asked three of mine already. Betsy, if you've got another one, we'll do it. Sure, I've got one. Okay. I have a question. Sure. Representative Hart, you said you thank Representative Rucci for bringing these questions to light, even though he was the minority leader and the Democrat opposition to the Republican majority. But we saw today in committee that we had a party-line vote. If there had been one more Democrat, Rucci, on that panel instead of a Republican, you very well could be facing a recommendation that you be punished. Would you have any opinion on the partisanship that we may have seen today? Well, thanks for the question. And, you know, Representative Rucci is a physician and a part-time legislator. And I don't know why he wasn't here today. You know, he might have had some professional conflict with that insofar as his work is concerned. But I think the issue got an adequate hearing. And I think we heard, you know, voices from both sides. And I think the decision was right. I don't think there has been a conflict with any of the votes I've taken, and particularly the ones that were examined closely. And I hope that the public tuned in and they heard the testimony. I think arguments were made on both sides. And I think the argument that prevailed was the right one. And I hope the public listened to that. And I hope that they can come down on the same side of that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Hart. Thank you, Representative Rucci. The case will be submitted.